What is happening, fellas? Today we got a customer that brought by a 150 car to get worked on. Uh, I think it's been setting for quite a while, so of course we'll have to swap out a carb. And the reason I don't clean 150 carbs is because they have like a diaphragm set up in them. This is what a 150 carb looks like. And, uh, and it has this little electronic, like I'm guessing it's an idle control or something. I haven't really dug into it, but um, for me, the shop rate I charge hourly is the same as what one of these costs. So why wouldn't you just go ahead and throw a brand new carb on it? So that's the reason, uh, just in case anybody was wondering, why don't we just slap a new carb on instead of cleaning the old ones? There's a lot that can go wrong on, on these and for the price. We just always recommend, I mean, they can pay me to clean it, but it's usually not that smart. So uh, we're going to slap a new carb on it because it has been set in a while. But the customer said that after they got some work done to it, it never performed in the top end like it uh, used to. So I'm wondering if the rollers in the CVT got flat spots on them or just worn out or a worn out belt or driven pulley. Uh, there's a couple different things in the CVT setup that could cause that. So what we're going to do first is slap this new carb on, some new fuel line, a new fuel filter, and put gas in it and go ride it and uh, just see what it's doing for ourselves. Then we can determine what it needs. So there's a go-kart. This is a Dayson, Dayson, a Dayson 150. So this is really close to what our blue V-twin go-kart is. Pretty much just has a little bit better looking front end on it. And uh, yeah, good little carts. They normally have front disc brakes where some 150s only have rear. You can see the air filter is completely disintegrated so someone's already put an upgraded air filter and an upgraded exhaust which is pretty sweet i've never seen this exhaust before i like that exhaust a lot i'm sure it wasn't cheap so i'm wondering if the main reason for this thing not running right is the carb was never jetted up to compensate for the filter and the exhaust so what we're going to do is go ahead and pull that setup off there put a new air filter on it as well and see what happens Okay, so I got that carb switched out and I haven't got an air filter, so we're gonna run it without one at first, but I have ordered in one. Um, so basically these petcocks on 50% of these uh, 150 go-karts have a vacuum control petcock. Now this is really good because if your kid was to flip it and the engine shuts off, the fuel shuts off and uh, it won't, you know, you don't have to make sure they turn their petcock on and off. This does it for you. The only bad thing is when you go to drain these tanks, you have to either take the petcock off, take the tank off, or you can check the links in the video description and find this uh this vacuum pulling tool so basically this will push this will push pressure when you squeeze it you can hear it or if you clog it up it'll suck vacuum you can see the gauge just dropped so what i did was hook this up to that vacuum line well i squeezed it first hooked it up and let go of it and it drawed vacuum and opened the petcock and we drained all the fuel so now we have some new fuel in it and let's see if she'll fire All right, so after starting the go-kart, we noticed that the brakes did not work whatsoever. I actually rode around the field and just had to let it idle down to a stop. Uh, so the master cylinders on these go-karts, if you leave them out in the weather, water will get down inside the plungers on each side and lock them up. 
Uh, this is the standard 150 master cylinder. If you notice, it has basically two reservoirs or like two master cylinders built into one that feed off the one reservoir. So this side right here is the front brakes. So you have each caliper run off this, then you have the rear brake, and then it can also support a second one, but they put the, this is basically a brake light uh, like sensor. So basically when it feels pressure, it turns your brake lights on. So this is a uh, link down below, go power sports sells these. You can actually buy the whole brake kit already pre-bled and everything. But since everything else is good on his cart, we're just gonna swap this out. So we use dot four brake fluid. It's also smart to buy smaller cans of brake fluid because once you crack that seal, they start drawing moisture, even if they're in a cabinet or something. So it's not good to have an open bottle, but I normally keep mine a couple weeks and then throw it away. So we use brake fluid quite a bit around here. So, and these master cylinders do come with new bolts and new uh, washers for your banjo fittings. So this master cylinder uses a kind of different bracket. Basically when you push the pedal, this thing moves. That is a really weird setup because basically what's happening is you're not getting a full push. Like that's as much brake as you can push. That don't make any sense. I don't know if someone's modified this, so it may have fine brakes. It just needs to have more travel to it. I mean, that's just barely any brakes. So we're gonna mess with this for a minute because this master cylinder could be good. You can see the lines are old. All the coating is coming off the stainless steel braided, but I'm sure he don't want to get into replacing lines if they're still good. So. Hopefully that's not a problem and we can uh, go ahead and get this. I'm gonna mess with this and see if there's a different way we can set this up because I'm pretty sure someone's made this whole setup here. So the brake bracket they had on it was completely wrong. It was only moving like a inch of its travel. So I threw together this thing. I just took some quarter inch flat stock and tigged it together. Took another, or uh, this is the original piece they had bolted to these. So basically, these two push the two separate master cylinders built in that one body um, and i had to grind down the bottom for clearance so i'll get this slapped on the cart and show you how it works so ba for some reason someone lost this piece the original piece like this uh, so someone rigged up the way it was and it was pushing it like only a quarter of an inch so just like in the car braxton's pumping the brakes and i'm going to crack the bleeder hold it Go ahead and pump it. Can't feel any different. More. Yeah. So a lot of air came out. So on these brakes, you need to bleed not only at the caliper, but you need to bleed these lines if you've ever had them taken apart. Go ahead, Brexton. Bleed these lines a couple more times. And there's a lot of air in that one. Okay. This brake fluid just looks awful, too. It's horrible stuff. Okay. Pump it. Nothing changing. Okay. You want me to get some new brake fluid? Mm -hmm. So I just noticed there is no castle nut on, on this bolt. They literally have the tie rod slid down in these tie rod ends with just keepers on them. This is super dangerous. That keeper brake, you're losing all steering and your tires are going to turn opposite ways. Oh boy. Trash in there? Yeah. All right, so we sucked all that old fluid out. There is a ton of, of dirt and grime in this master cylinder. So I'm going to fill it up one more time and uh, basically use a medicine syringe to clean it completely out and then we can continue bleeding but there's a ton of air in the lines 
I don't know if you can see all the flakes that's inside there, but it's rough. So again, basically what we're doing is I'm priming it with the pedal. You know, I'll pump it, then I'll hold it, and we break open. So this side, the driver's side of the master cylinder is the front brake. So you have this one and this one is going to each front caliper. So this is what we're bleeding first. We get all the air purged out of this because this, this is a perfect place for it to trap air. So once we get these two bled, then we move over to the caliper where the line comes into the caliper on the banjo fitting. We bleed that next until we get no more air out of it. Then we move on to the actual bleeder. And like I said, we only have one plunger in that master cylinder. So we're only working the driver's side of this master cylinder right now. And the reason we do that is because we've done it with both plungers in before. What happens is an air pocket can get trapped right at this brake light sensor this pressure sensor that turns your brake lights on uh, air pocket can get trapped right there so sometimes you need to break this loose with a set of pliers to get the air pocket out of there so that's why you want to only do one side of the master cylinder at a time so braxton's already done the line on this side so he's going to see if anything comes out of the leader off fluid yep rough looking yeah really rough. we'll bleed it a few times so that side had all the air out. Uh, so for some reason, the driver's side is where tight. Yeah. Is where all the, uh, oh, it's like instant tight. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like that instantly. That was awful. Okay, go ahead and bleed it. So now we have it, it's like two pumps and it's full pressure. That was a lot of air. Air? Yeah. Okay, ready? All right, again. What was that? More. Air? Yep. Okay, go. Getting a lot of air, he said, out of that side, so. All right, that's fluid. All right, we're gonna keep pumping it until we get some of this old fluid out. Then when you're tight. It's tight, yeah. It's working extremely good now. All right, one more time, just for the kids back home. The boys in blue. Fluid? Yep. Alrighty. There's nothing to call your sister in Arizona about, but. So now that we have the fronts all bled, we can pull this piece I made out, just a quarter inch bolt, and we can pull this plunger out and switch it over to the rear. Now we can bleed the rear brakes. The same thing again. We're just basically cracking the line loose and Uh, doing the line first then we go back to the line on the rear see that's full of air still so now we'll prime this up and this line is underneath on the front on the passenger side of the reservoir or on the master cylinder so now we'll pump it up bleed it right here then we'll go back bleed the line on the caliper and bleed the ble bleeder on the caliper Woo! and you keep pressure against it and these lines are oh that's good me. that was that felt pretty dang good of uh all fluid there's a nice hand you got there thank you I blew fluid all over my leg Ugh. and that's this stuff stinks it smells like rust water garbage water this stuff smells like garbage water yeah garbage water is the worst you get on your hands and you wash your hands 97,000 times for it to smell out Ready? and it never works. Spray me again. Okay, I think that's good. It's all fluid. We got no air coming out right here. Now, move on to the back. To the back we go. All right, so the brakes are all bled up on this thing and we put air in the tires, she's ready to leave. We did have to pull the nuts off the tie rod ends and put actual castle nuts, as you can see. It did not have castle nuts, it just had lock nuts and then they put a little cotter key in there and the nut was loosening. So uh, make sure you run castle nuts on your tie rod. So everything's done. Hope uh, we'll do a full in-depth video on how to bleed brakes when we have a third person to hold the camera. It takes three people to film something like that. So yeah. Braxton's gonna 
Alright, look at that mustache. Mustache on the script. <laughs> Uh, so Braxton gonna take this thing around the trail and uh, see how she rides. And die probably. Okay. guys uh the go-kart is running awesome the customer's going to come pick it up tomorrow so i hope they enjoy it um good running little go-kart brakes work amazing now they had a ton of air in them and then they had that problem and uh, at the first video i said it had a problem in the upper rpms uh the problem was they never jetted up the carb to compensate for the exhaust and the air filter so we didn't have to do anything to it to uh, fix anything like that cvt pulls great so this customer is ready to go so we're going to do a full how-to video very soon on the channel going really in depth uh just on brakes and i'll have a third person here miss redbeard can film us so we can get some really good shots of bleeding the brakes so thank you guys so much for watching uh make sure to check out all the links for the parts we use on this go-kart braxton's outside riding it right now uh and one thing someone said on a couple videos ago that it was loud in here like they could hear these ac units you actually cannot hear the acs you hear the three ceiling fans we installed we have ceiling fans installed uh, all through the center of the shop these acs are actually running full bore right now at 68 degrees it feels amazing in here and you can't hear these things at all so that's what you're hearing is those fans on high moving the air around so just want to note those mr cools are quiet and super good and i forgot to say they do have a heat pump in them so they're going to heat this place during the winter time as well so make sure to check out the links in the video description because they do help us out uh, all of our sponsors are down there benchmark abrasives has all your cutting discs 
uh, any kind of abrasives basically they got die grinder bits all types of stuff they are amazing also mr cool is the best product we ever got in this garage because your boy your big daddy isn't sweating in here and uh, go power sports for the awesome go-kart goodness so thank you guys for watching on to the next one we love you and god bless